This is my 300 litre rimless aquarium and it loses between 12 and 13 pints of water into the atmosphere every day which causes black mould issues. So how do you stop the water loss without losing the effect of a rimless aquarium? Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Russ and welcome back to another video. So this is, like I say, my rimless aquarium. It's 300 litres. And what a rimless aquarium gives you is the options to extend your scape. So you can have larger pieces of wood coming out of the, out of the top of the aquarium. Your plants can grow out of the top of the aquarium. Larger sized pieces of rock coming out of the aquarium. And some people will even put house plants that have had all the dirt washed off the roots, things like peace lilies, will place them in the aquarium so the roots are taking water out and the lilies will and the plants will grow out of the aquarium. But if you've not got that going on, which I haven't, then the water loss becomes a real issue. This aquarium, I topped up minimum 12 pints of water per day. Now that is water that is lost into the atmosphere. It runs at 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And as you can see, there is quite a lot of flow on the surface. So that all adds to the water loss. Now, when water loss goes into the atmosphere, if your room isn't properly ventilated, then you're gonna start, that moisture is gonna start entering the plaster in your walls. And after 10 days of dampness, you'll start getting black mold forming. That is not what you want. Black mold is not great. The spores when you breathe them in can affect your breathing. So if you have asthmatics in the family, then it's gonna become quite a dangerous environment for them. And even if you've not got asthmatics in the family, if you're breathing in black mold, it does become a dangerous environment for you. Just to give you an idea, of how much 12 pints is, that is seven liters. That is the equivalent of seven one liter bottles of water. So if you don't have any of your skate protruding from the top of your aquarium, how do you stop that water loss? Well, I've looked into this because I was getting sick and tired of having a white black mold off all the time. So first of all, I went on to Amazon and I had a look at what was going on there. I didn't want to put a lid on there because I didn't want to look when I'm side like level with the aquarium. I didn't want to lose the effect of having a rimless aquarium. I have an aquarium with a lid on it and I love that. And it puts a border at the top. But when you've got a rimless, you kind of lose that border and you don't want that border. So as I say, I went on to Amazon and I had a look at what was on the market. And all I could see really was the nets that you can put on the top. And what you do, you put like a magnetic strip all around the top of your aquarium and then nets fit on there and the magnet keeps them held there tight. What the nets do is stop any fish from jumping out of your aquarium, but it doesn't stop the water loss. So I decided to go down the DIY route. I ordered some clips that clip around the top of the aquarium. And I went to a local DIY store and I bought some clear plastic. I cut it out to size carefully. And I also put a little hole in there so I could feed through. And I placed that into the aquarium and it looked great. You didn't lose the vision of the rimless aquarium and it stops the water loss but over a couple of months with the evaporating water touching the lid and that weight of that water pulling the plastic down and the heat of the light is also just softening that plastic enough to make it start dipping in the middle it soon become unsightly so when you have a beautiful aquarium you do not want the lid ruining the effect. So where do we go from here? 
So I went and spoke to a local glaziers and they advised me to make a template of the aquarium and take the template back to them and they'd do the rest. So I came home after calling back at the local DIY store and I bought a roll of wallpaper lining paper because it's a little bit thicker and I attached the wallpaper to the top of the aquarium. I taped it on so one straight side of the paper was level with the straight side of the aquarium and then with a pencil I drew round carefully making sure that that template was the same size as the aquarium itself. I then made the decision that I wanted to cut the template straight down the side, straight down the line, leaving one third at the front and two thirds at the back. And then I also had cutouts placed at the back of the template so wires and filter pipes could enter the, the, the aquarium freely. And if I choose to put peace lilies growing out the rear of the aquarium, there's also room for that to happen too. Once I was completely happy that that template was the perfect size, I returned it back to the glazers and they came back with this. It's made of five millimeter thick toughened glass. It's had all the edges, made safe, so there's no way you're gonna cut yourself. And it does the job, it stops the water loss. But I'll give you a closer look. So we'll start at the rear, where here you can see the cutout for the pipes for the filter. And the heater sat in there and a secondary filter is also in there. Then we come around to here where I have the cutouts made for the light riser. And what the light riser actually does is hold the lid in place. As we come around, I've got some clear acrylic hinges, which from Amazon, I'll leave the link in the description for those. I put four in place in total. And the glue on them is really strong. Now this has been on the aquarium for approximately 10 months and the moisture has not affected the glue on the hinges whatsoever. And just to show you, the hinges that gives me the opportunity to rise the lid and feed the fish without removing the glass lid. Now I will say the glass lid is pretty heavy but it's not too heavy to handle and if there's two of you in the property then make it a two-man job. Again on this side the cutout for the for the riser for the light and then at the rear there I have another hole put out with a heater sat in there but that also gives me a place where I can grow maybe a piece of out of there in time if I choose to do that and that is how I stopped the water locks from a rimless aquarium without losing the effect of a rimless aquarium. I put this video together today because I was frequently asked on the Facebook group Fish Keeping in the UK, how do you stop the water loss from a rimless aquarium? And that is how I personally did it. But I'm also asked, what are the best and the worst tank mates that you can keep with rainbow fish. And if you want to know what they are, then watch this video next.